I can achieve it. Hello, Just Like Me fans, Michelle here, and I am here today with Christine Gibson, the author of Christine's Big Hair Adventure. Christine, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate this opportunity. No problem. Tell the viewers about your journey. We always tell, talk about how you got started, how you got to where you are today. Well, I always wanted to do, make an impression on kids. I always wanted to do something. And I always said I was going to write books. And you know how sometimes you talk more than you actually put things into action. So mm -hmm. that was my hiccup in my journey. So one day, um, I work for a company called Dream Builders University. And um, the guy, the owner, he came up to me. He was like, you always keep talking about you're going to write this book. <laughs> so, so what's the hold up? Like, what? why haven't you written it? So in my mind, I'm thinking like, you got to find an illustrator. This process is too right. big for me. And I'm like, can I really, really do it? So finally, he was like, just write the book. So I'm like, Okay. And and he said, why don't you make a book about Afro adventures? And we were laughing. And I was like, well, what about big hair adventures? And he was like, that's it. So I was like super inspired from that point. So I went home and I literally sat down with a pencil and paper and I started writing. And I wrote this story about a little girl with big hair who actually didn't even know she had big hair. It's just who she was. Mm -hmm. And from there, the words should start coming out. They just start flowing. So that was really my why behind the book. And also growing up, I had some serious issues with learning to be okay with who I am. Mm -hmm. So because of my journey, I wanted to help out kids on their journey as well. That's awesome. I remember looking at the book and um, it's funny that you mentioned that Christine didn't even realize she had big hair until somebody in the book points it out to her. Right. And that that kind of touched on for me because I think we all have a journey. Your journey is different than my journey. But I remember um, going from a school where everybody looked like me um, up until middle school and then transferring to a school where everybody did not look like me. Right. Um, and when I went to the other school, the first question, the first question I got on the playground, the first little girl ran up to me and she said, well, what are you? And um, I was like, I was taken aback. No, the same exact way that Christine was taken aback by the, the little girl in the book who asked her, why is your hair so big? Like, right. she had never thought about why her hair was big. And I had never thought about what I was. I just was right. what I was. Um, and that was the soul. That, I mean, I think that even if that wasn't, that's not your struggle exactly. Right. I think everybody can relate to having that moment when like you recognize that you are different. That's that kind of ties into my second question, which is what your goals for what you want readers to take away from the book. What do you want your readers when they read Christine's Big Hair Adventures or any of the other in the adventure series? Because now it's a series. What do you want readers to take away from your books? Okay. One, that being on a journey of self-awareness and learning how great you are is a process. And it, ha it starts with many conversations. Um, I want readers to take away that, have those conversations with the children. Um, they already, it's so many kids who haven't been told how great they are and how awesome and, and just their opinions matter and their faces matter and their skin color matters in the world. I want them to read the book and say, hey, you matter. You actually make a difference. Your opinion does help the world be a better place. And I want them to be able to identify with themselves. I want them to see representation in everywhere they go. I asked a little girl one day about what did a doctor look like? And she said, well, it's a white man. Wow. <laughs> with a white coat on. I said, well, what about a brown man? She said, well, I haven't seen one yet. So she couldn't even identify with that. And yeah. I'm like, that's the whole purpose of Just Like Me books. I want to make sure that we are putting images in front of kids that they can see themselves and therefore can relate. Because yeah. like our model says, if I can see it, I can achieve it. And that right there alone just showed me like, okay, you got to push forward. You got to keep going with this and encourage everybody else who's, you know, writing books that are dedicated to not just one specific gender or race, but to put out there in the masses so that when they see these images, they can say, oh, there's one like me. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
there's a doctor like me and there's a doctor like her. You know, we need uh, an array, uh, a, a spectrum of, right. of, of literature that speaks to the youth. And, yeah. and it shouldn't just look one way. Okay. Can you read your favorite part of Christine's Big Hair Adventures for us? I can. So my favorite part in the book is when Christine got her feelings hurt and she goes to her grandmother. Mm. And her grandmother uh, had to reassure her how awesome she was. I've never seen anyone so little with such huge hair. This is very strange for Sophia. So Sophia says, how did you get such big hair? It looks weird. Why is your hair so big? Sophia asked as she continued to stare. Christine quite didn't quite understand that Sophie, what Sophia meant. All her friends and family had similar hair or hairstyles. Christine didn't know how to answer that question. So she did what she normally does when she could not figure out an answer. She asked her grandma. She said, Grandma, why is my hair so big? Christine asked with a look of sadness and confusion. Grandma smiled and gave Christine a huge hug and sat her down on her lap. We are all very special and different. You were born very special, unique person. Your hair is so big because you are so amazing to me. And it tells everyone who meets you just how great you are. Always be proud of who you are and your individuality helps the world be a better place. You know what really stuck out for me for that one is that Sophia wasn't being mean. No. Sophia was being curious. It goes back to the point that you were making about how all children need to be able to see different representations and literature because for someone like Sophia, and it's very real, um, right. that might not be what she sees on a normal basis. And so she asks questions and we always tell kids that asking questions is the best way to figure things out. So she asked the question and yeah. it didn't mean to hurt the feelings and it, and it wasn't meant in a mean way. She just had never seen anybody with hair like that before. Um, so I think that it's, that's a teachable on both ends. And I love that that's in the story. Tell us where can readers find your book? So readers can find my book. They can go to my website, Christine's big hair adventures.com. Um, I got an upcoming project that's coming out this July in like a couple of days. So the new book is out. Well, it'll be focused on the website, but you can get to the website and just go to Christine's big hair adventures.com. Awesome. Well, we will also on readjustlikeme.com be promoting your books as well. Um, and we look forward to seeing all the new books in the Christine's Big Hair Adventure series. And I want to thank you so much for talking with us here today. And good luck. And we can't wait to see more from Christine. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. All right. Just like me, fans, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, if I can see it, I can achieve it. If I can see it, I can achieve it.